Hello everybody. Today we continue having a look at the best uh, web technologies of 2020 or 2021 actually. And the next on our list is uh, React. It's a library to build uh, uh, web UIs, complex web UIs. Yesterday we looked at uh, Vue, uh, which is uh, a competitor to React, and today we have a chance to look at React, uh, which I would say is more popular and is a de facto standout in the enterprise world for building uh, web front ends in 2021. So uh, let's have a look. I do have a small experience working with React, so this will be not completely new to me. But I don't think I ever started with uh, with just a README and a quick start got object. So let's have a look what what they have. Uh, all right. So first goes with description of uh, I think like the tenets of the library itself, and then we have the installation guide. So it has been designed for gradual adoption from the start and you can pick one of the three options here using online playgrounds or just add React to your website uh, as a script tag in one minute. And another one is create a new React app if you're looking for a powerful JavaScript tool chain. Uh, I, I'm feeling like creating a new React app because that's what most developers do these days. So let's have a look how would this work out. So creating a new app. Yeah, first they make sure you're aware that you might not need a tool chain, but in the most real world situation you will, like if you're working, especially if you're working in a team, there's probably a tool chain set up. So We'll have a look on how to set up a new React app with a tool chain uh, set up in our project. So here they have a list of recommended tool chains. Uh, I believe that's the one that's the most uh, recommended. So if you're creating a new single page application, use create. React app, which is what they describe here. Uh, they also have other tool chains for server rendered websites, for static content oriented websites. And when you build a component library, so the components to be used in other React apps, you would uh, probably pick a different tool chain. So for today, we will pick Create React app. And we will try to build, at least we will see what it takes to create a new single page from scratch. Uh, so let's see. Now the Create React app is basically like a script that creates a project for you. And we will see how it will work out on my laptop today. So to create a project from NPX Create React app, uh, we already assume the NPX is installed on the machine. We'll see in a few seconds if it's actually true. So they do specify the requirements. So you would need Node version 8.10 and NPM version 5.6 or greater. So let's have a look. Let's first check those requirements. So Node version, I have version 12, which is greater than version 8. So then we're good there. And the NPM that I have installed is 6.13. Okay, cool. But let's see. So it created a separate folder. And yes, the node module appeared in the file tree already. And it's probably a long list of dependencies. Yes, this is just like half of NPM 
uh, ecosystem is downloaded to your laptop right and to add to add to this long list which like each folder is a module there are also the folders that start at, with add sign and they basically mean there are more modules and they are grouped into packages or into namespaces so each of these would uh, have one or more modules inside so this is what it takes the modern front-end tool chain uh, to be up and ready Oh no, it was not running, so only now it cleaned the output and it start it is starting the development server. So when starting the development server, I would expect the, at least the port number to be in the output so that the developer can. Now control will provide access to documents and Google Chrome app. Why would Web Store want that? Don't think I will allow. All oh, right, so what happened there? You don't see that, but on my second screen, there is another browser. And uh, now it's, it's clear why Web Store wanted to have access to Chrome. So in, in another browser, in Firefox, it's actually the localhost 3000 is being opened. I will open it in the browser that you can see in this recording. Uh, but it does take a long time to respond. So right now it's just a blank screen showing absolutely nothing. I'm not even sure the development server has started already. And I'm not sure if I actually broke the flow of the script by denying the webstorm access to Chrome. No, that should not be the case, right? Yeah. All right. So, as expected, this suggests open localhost 3000. Uh, that's what we did. And there, there is another warning like don't upload things as they are in, when running in production, but instead run an npm run build, which we will leave for later videos. So, the nice flow again just suggests. It generated the source folder for us and we have an app.js let's examine that all right so the first thing I want to do is I want to remove this animated logo okay move that webstorm auto saves this is automatically picked up by the transpiler and by the development server and now we don't see the logo so we finally can start building our application so this file yeah we don't need and I, I think this is also a nice example because this is somewhat uh, non-traditional way but it is traditional for webpack of course to import assets not only JavaScripts, but also assets that you use in your application into the JavaScript file. So in this case, it imported logo as SVG. And let's see what actually, how this logo was used. So it was uh, using the binding, it was used to provide a value for the image source. So that's interesting. I think this would be something like um, encoded content of the image is provided to the source so the browser can without downloading any files uh, show the logo to you okay I will remove this for now another example is importing a CSS file that you are using in your app and this is just a standard CSS uh, file and the webpack makes sure that it sees this file and the webpack makes sure your CSS ends up in your page as you develop. developing. 